Cecilia and Barbara. That was Barbara Gelman. I like Barbara Gelman, but when Cablevision had done such a bad job running the country, the company, uh, and lost all that money, they had to fire Barbara Gelman. I wish they would fire Christine Savarino. Cecilia and Barbara had a party for Peekskill signers, and Lindy came, and Glendora was not invited. It's only my show. I wasn't invited. And nobody can beat Dolan Cablevision for dehumanization. Nobody. And Todd. Look what they did to Ecock. Okay, so here's many, many, many pages of logs, as I just read to you. And that takes us up to, here is the Cablevision list of public access producers in the peak skill system. Another thing that peaks, I didn't mention in here, but another thing that peak skill does illegally is uh, they charge people for editing. Public access editing is supposed to be at the cable operator's expense. C. Goldberg versus Cablevision in the Second Circuit. Here is uh, Multinoma or Multnoma or whatever. Uh, public access in Portland, Oregon. They send you a letter and they send you your schedule. Now isn't that nice? Cablevision would never do anything like that. That's, that's too amiable. That's too much an amenity. We're up to page 69. Next section is the New York uh, Law Journal. I did a front page story on the case uh, when Pro Se Glendora beat Park Avenue lawyer Kelly. They had Glendora's picture in the article on the front page. And it is deep in the 25,000 pages that Glendora has on Dolan Cablevision, and it would take a day or two to uh, disinter it, and I'm just not going to do it. Cablevision was so anxious to uh, win this case, uh, Glendora versus Cablevision, when they took it off in Nassau County, they were so anxious to win it that they hired Mark Fowler, and Mark Fowler is a former commissioner of the Federal Communications Commission but he lost to Glendora. He was standing there doing his oral argument. I was standing there doing my oral argument. And the judges were minor. And Van Grafen and, what's his name? Is it Mahoney from Brooklyn? Anyway, the former chairman of the Federal Communications Commission lost to Glendora. Uh, here's the article that was in the New York Times when Glendora beat Cablevision. I'm going to put the program back on the TV. That was a nice camera. That was a Canon. That was nice. They don't make camcorders as well as they used to. It was featured in the Westchester Law Journal. Glendora returns to Long Island Cable after Judge Silverman rules in her favor. This was a big page story in uh, Newsday, Long Island. Gadfly swats cable giant. Dora fights cable vision. Multi channel news. Cable vision loses first round and access law test. <laughs> well, they lost all the rounds. <laughs> cable vision. <laughs> A chat with Glendora is back on TV. I'm uh, wobbling about Norwalk, Connecticut. But I have a man there who said he would sign. In Fairfield County, he owns uh, the uh, New England limousine service of Fairfield. Here's a note to Glendora, from Glendora. Glendora, when you go to Garrison to go to the town court, uh, you can go to Peekskill and find signers there. Well, I did. Oh, boy. I'm home near midnight. Traveled 240 miles. Spent hours and hours 
getting the, uh, the signers. Now here's some of my other signers just to show you the court that it's uh, no big deal signing. Nothing ever comes of it. It's a meaningless thing anyhow. It has no statutory basis, folks. There's no statute ever written by the New York State Legislature or by the Congress of the United States nor by the municipalities to support what they do. They just try to bully you out of public access. The Cablevision papers are toothless. There's no statutory authority. It's, they are unconscionable. They are no signed papers by two partners. That is, it's not a contract. Cablevision doesn't sign it and send it back to the signer with an affidavit of service. Ecock overreacted. She was uh, pressured out by Cecilia's extortion. And here are my sweet, sweet signers. Zeke Hunter in Cross River. George Paris in New Rochelle. Hello, hi George. Oh, good old sweet pie, Mary Ramage, signs for the Yorktown system. Taylor Holbrook, the Reverend Taylor Holbrook, signs for Wappingers. These are some of the dearest friends that Franklin and I have had. Robert Angel uh, for Austin. There's just a few of them. Mary Ramage and I had such a good time when we went to Phillipstown Court for the hearing. Uh, here are the logs that started uh, with Garrison and Ecock. And it started on um, in May, around about the 21st of May. And many pages of those logs. I'll just show you. Page. They're quite detailed. Keeping a log is very, very important. There's uh, the number of the uh, session, the date, and what was done, and how long it took. So this goes on for sixteen pages. Now, page ninety-five. Excuse me, page 97, page 99, 101. And Glendora memorializes uh, what happened in court on October the 18th, last week, Monday, uh, from 40, 49 p.m. to uh, 5.09 p.m. Uh, Glendora was there, McQuaid was there, and Mary Romage was there and uh, Toman was the judge. And uh, when Toman called the case, Glendora versus Ecock, uh, Glendora stood and said, ready. And Glendora should have said, plaintiff, ready. And then McQuaid uh, stood up and mumbled something about defendant. And then McQuaid went, who is it? Who? Hold on, folks. It's somebody at the door. Quote the raven, nevermore. Now, this is a lunar eclipse. And what does that mean? That the... Uh, Earth is between the sun and the moon. Oh, okay. And has the eclipse started? Yes. But unfortunately, the clouds are between the Earth and the Moon also. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and so the eclipse is half over? I'd say about a third. Does what it look like? Yes. How long will it take? Ten, well, for about another half hour. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. So the Earth comes between the Moon and the Sun. Mm -hmm. And that puts a shadow on the Moon, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Either that or it's being eaten. <laughs> oh, thank you for telling me. I didn't would I would have missed this completely. Yeah. Well, I like 
celestial event. Yes. Yes, it is. It's, it never ceases to amaze. Tom told me about a year ago when the northern lights were coming, and that was amazing to see. Oh, you saw the northern lights? Yeah. From here? It's the only time in my life. Right? Really? Mm -hmm. From here? Yep. When was that? That would have been, I, I think it was the uh, spring of 2003. Oh, and you saw saw them well from here? Mm-hmm. Now, what did you say, that it's uh, halfway over now? It's further than it was, I guess. And now we don't have clouds? A little bit. Yeah, I can't see the arc. Isn't that interesting? Oh, isn't that interesting? It doesn't look like an eclipse. On a no, close not when you're close up like that, but from far away it does. Huh. Yeah, it really does look like an eclipse. <laughs> so how much longer do you think it will be? Well, it'll cov be completely covered, I guess, in a 45 minutes or so. It'll be completely covered? That's what I understand. And then how long will it take to come out of it? I'd say another hour. Probably been an hour. Well, probably been about 15 minutes or so. Oh, thank you very much for telling us. You're very welcome. Jack said something about the moon would change color around 1020 or something like that. And but color what, orange? Yeah. I'm not sure why that would be, but he, his science teacher was telling him about it. Oh, that's oh. nice. Sure. All right, well, I'll see you around because I'll be here. Oh, that's so nice. For, that was so nice. So nice to live in a neighborhood with good people and come and tell you that you're missing the eclipse of the moon. Well, this isn't the first time that Charles Dolan, John Tyler, and Cablevision have <laughs> ruined a day. Well, they don't really ruin it. Well, I was telling you what happened. Okay, McQuaid went to the uh, plaintiff's table. <laughs> That's pretty dumb. You know, she's the defendant. And so Glendora says, no, no, that's the plaintiff's table. You go over there. And I pointed to the plaintiff's table, the defendant's table. And Glendora, I'm the plaintiff, Glendora. And Judge Toman, Stephen Toman, uh, said, you have a last name? And Glendora says, no, Glendora is it. Tolman, a defendant, and uh, Laura McQuaid said Laura McQuaid, and she spelled it, and she said Sally Stevens Burke, and Burke, and Glendora says, may I have a card? And McQuaid reaches for her purse, and then she reconsiders, and she says, I don't have a card. Glendora, you don't have a card? My name is on the papers. Well, I don't think it is. You don't have a card anywhere? No. Glendora, your order. Tolman said something. Glenn said, okay. And Glendora hands McQuaid her copy of Glendora's cross motion. I read that to you last week. That took three programs, three half-hour programs. Do you remember that? Glendora, is Ecock here? McQuaid, no, she's not. Glendora, is she coming? McQuaid, no, she's not. Tolman said something. Motion to dismiss. Glendora says, here's my cross motion. Tolman says, is it the original? Glendora says, yes, original to the clerk. And Tolman asks McQuaid, how long do you need to answer? And McQuaid says, I would ask that the court dismiss this matter. The defendant has been harassed long enough 
with this matter. If you are going to reserve, then I will need two to three weeks to reply. And then Toman looked straight at McClay and said, I am going to reserve. I'm going to read this, holding up my cross motion. What she was trying to do was to get a summary judgment. Dismiss it right then and there. Thank you. Judge Toman, in fact, I said thank you right there in court when he did that. I certainly was prepared to jump to the, my defense on that one. That would have been a horrible denial of due process. So McQuaid and Toman, the judge, uh, discuss how much time uh, McQuaid needs to reply, and she said two or three weeks, and Bundor says, well, I need a date. And Mary Marlene Bowman, uh, the clerk, looked in the book and said, November 15th. And Glendora says, well, what day is that? And Tolman says, Monday. And then he says, that's my court day. And they to a chat with Glendora, America's champion of pro se litigants rights and First Amendment rights. Stay tuned, we will be right back with our show. What do we want? Justice! What do we want? Now! Who are we? something about fully submitted and you can reply after that date if you want to and I said I said thank you I guess and Tolman said shortly after and Gwendor says I need a date sir and Tolman says night November 15th I said yes but you said it was your court night and you wanted it different and Tolman says, no, your cross motion. She has until November 15th to reply to your cross motion. Already submitted. Now, did you put in your opposition an affirmation to this motion? He said to Glendora. And Glendora said, yes. In your cross motion, he asked. Glendora said, yes, it's in there. Okay, your opposition is in. Your cross motion is in. All I need is a reply to your cross motion, and that will be here November 15th. And Glendora says, is that postmarked November 15th? Toman, postmarked November 15th. Toman said something else about, it was about 10 words. Glendora says, okay, do I get a sir reply? In other words, they made a motion to dismiss. I made a cross motion to deny the motion to dismiss and to grant all of my uh, relief requested and to sanction them. Uh, so they uh, get an answer to my cross motion, a reply to my cross motion. And then usually uh, I wouldn't get a sir reply, but he gave me a sir reply spelled S-U-R. Uh, 
I said, do I get a sir reply? And Toman, the judge, says, if you want to make a sir reply, you can make it. But immediately after, Glendora says, give me a date. And Toman says, one week after that. One week, November 22nd. Postmarked? Toman, yes. Glenn, okay. Toman, then it will be fully submitted. If you don't reply by the 22nd, Glendora says, I will. If you don't respond, it will be decided after the 22nd. Glendora, but I wanted a trial. No, I wanted a trial. Maybe I should talk to, well, if the motion is denied, the judge says, the case goes forward. No, the case doesn't go forward. If the motion is granted, oh yeah, yeah, the case goes forward if the motion is denied. If the motion is granted, they're asking to dismiss, you can't have a trial because it would be dismissed. And I don't know what relief you are asking for. Glendora, $3,000. $3,000. Judge Tolman said something. It was about 10 words or so. And Glendora says, no other relief, I don't think. Just the $3,000. And everything's quiet. And Glendora says, do you pronounce your name Toman? He says, no, Toman. It's spelled with a double N. Do you want to, uh, McQuaid says, do you want to hear any argument on our pending motion? Toman, no. And then he said about 20 words to McQuaid. McQuaid, thank you. Glendora, thank you. Can I tell a joke? <laughs> and Toman says, no. <laughs> and Mary Ramage laughed. And, and Mary, when she laughs, it makes me laugh. And so I laughed. And Glenn said to myself, or I said to myself, I'll put it in my reply. Well, I didn't. It's a good joke, too. I'll tell it to you. The uh, judge said, why did you park there? And the defendant said, because of the sign. The judge says, what sign? And the defendant says, the sign said fine for parking. The gun packed up her crisscross, all her notes, and put in the uh, Staples ream box. And it was scarcely going down, it was really scary going down those stakes. There's an old, old building and uh, the stairs, I you know, like, well, twice as wide as this room. Curious great big blocks, and these steep, steep, steep stairs, and a whole lot of them. You know, it was so easy to leave your balance because you didn't have anything to hold on to. And it was 5 p.m., and the total time was about 13 minutes. And outside, I asked a seven-foot police officer what he, what his badges of glory were, and did you save somebody's life? I asked him. Yes, a little boy was choking. And over the phone, we told the people how to apply the Heinemann or Hucker, what's it called, maneuver. And they did, and he lived. Isn't that a joy? And so then the uh, log goes on. I took Mary Romage back to uh, P uh, Mohegan Lake. Mohegan Lake's nice. They have nice stores. And then uh, I went back to Peekskill. I went back to Tabats but her place was closed. She's my new signer in Peekskill. And then I drove up to Fishkill on Route 9, and uh, I visited with my funeral director. My funeral director is one of my best friends. She's 24 years old, and she's adorable. And I tell her undertaker jokes. Uh, and then it's sort of a nice ride. If you didn't get up at 5 o'clock, morning if you hadn't already driven 150 miles, but it's sort of a nice ride. You leave Fishgill, you go up Route 9, you go through all this uh, shopping area at Wappingers, and you go to the city of Poughkeepsie and the town of Poughkeepsie, and then you go to Hyde Park, and then you go, it's quite a ways from Hyde Park up to Rhinecliff, and then from Rhinecliff to 
Red Hook. I always like to stop at the Stewart's in Red Hook, but I missed it. And then Upper Red Hook, and that's the end of Dutchess County. And now you're in, the, it gets very rural, and now you're in Columbia County. You're all still on Route 9. And before you know it, you're at Route 9H. And once you're at Route 9H, you're about 10 miles from home. And I missed a few turns, so I went on to the next turn. And I got home about 10, 10, 15. So the whole thing took, I started getting ready for it around 8 o'clock. So it's 13 or 14 hours, 250 miles. But we're going to stand up for public access, and that's all there is to it. And they're not going to get away from these things. And let me tell you, the next person who says he or she will sign these foolish cable vision papers and says yes, and then cable vision calls up and scares them and extortion, uh, commits extortion, and the person backs down, that person's going to get sued, and cable vision is going to get sued with them. This has happened about 28 times. It's not going to happen again without litigation. So that's all of the logs that I included in this 130-page uh, post-hearing memorandum. And I asked them, please don't make me include all the receipts I have. Franklin and I keep the books. We had kept books 48 years, and I still keep them, uh, whereby you have a daily page, and you put in everything that comes in and everything that comes out, the date that it happened, and how much it was, and what it was. And then at the end of the week, when you, of course you add that up at the end of the week, and then you take each item and put it over in the month column, if it's office supplies, if it's gasoline, uh, all the business stuff, and then all the personal stuff. And then at the end of the month, you add up the columns. Then you take those amounts, and then you put them on the year sheet for the month of uh, October, for instance. And we've done that carefully. And we have a receipt for everything. And there's so many receipts. So I asked them, please don't make me produce those receipts. It would take a day to get them all together. And I, sw I swore under penalty of perjury. Uh, statements that Glendora was going to make in court, but there's no trial. Did he cock talk it over with Glendora first? No. Uh, couldn't she have called Glendora's other signers for years and seen if they ever had any trouble or any hurt? She turned her back on free speech, on America, and on democracy. She never saw the show and therefore had no complaint against it. Glendora has audio tapes and videotapes to show the court. Will that ever happen? Uh, one videotape is Glendora's appearance as a guest on the David Letterman show. Uh, this will tell you why Glendora charges $300 an hour as a TV professional, along with all of the experience in litigation in courts and with all of the experience of doing public access programs. Uh, 50, uh, over 50 years in broadcast TV and over 30 years in cable TV. Uh, does this court have any video playback? Uh, this case is of national interest. The government has an interest in this case, public access, as demonstrated in uh, Title 47 U.S. Code, Section 521, uh, at Secretary, which is a law that regulates public access. Callagy has no meritorious defense. Not one thing he proffers abs absolves ECOC from breaching contract with Glendora. The long list incomplete of Glendora's brave fights for rights has no relevance, nor does the cable vision policies, rules, uh, procedures. They are not germane. They are not the issue. And it occurred to me in one of those electromagnetic waves that goes through your head at 100 and 